Tesla has a big secret that they don't want you to know. They're making five big changes right now that are directly going against current Tesla owners. They're going against their own customers here. They're adding new restrictions. They are removing features and taking away longstanding owner perks, which as many owners asking the question, does Tesla even care about their customers anymore or are they only in this for the money? This is all around bad news for current Tesla owners and even uh, Tesla owners who are about to take delivery of their cars right now. And uh, I'm here to break down the changes in this video that are very controversial. So let me tell you the top five changes Tesla is making. Let me tell you what's being removed, what's sort of going away, why people are so upset, why many Tesla owners are furious and why some owners aren't mad but just disappointed, or maybe both mad and disappointed. And also let me give some stuff away for you guys. I'm gonna give you a chance to win your very own Tesla or $50,000 cash, and also a giveaway from me, $25 of Amazon gift card money free. All you gotta do is stay tuned to the end of the video to learn more on how you can win for free. So some good news and some bad news here in this video. And also a huge thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Let me start this video with a really quick disclaimer. And that is to say, I am not a Tesla hater. I'm not a Tesla Q member. I'm not trying to beat the Tesla stock or anything like that. That's not the case. I love Tesla. I make videos about Tesla all the time here on this channel. I own two Teslas. I've owned multiple Teslas. I'm a huge fan of the company. But that isn't to say that I'm a fanboy that's going to ignore some big mistakes Tesla's making. There's a big change right now happening in the Tesla ecosystem with their services, with the software, with the cars, a lot of good stuff happening, of course, but also some bad stuff that I do think is worth talking about. So just to make it clear, I'm not a Tesla hater. I like Elon, I like Tesla, I like the company, I like the cars, but there are some controversial changes that we need to talk about that have many owners, myself included, pretty upset right now. So to kick things off with mistake number one, let's talk about the software in Tesla cars. Now, for a very long time, Tesla was one of the only automakers providing software in their cars that was actually good. It doesn't rely on third-party systems like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Tesla develops their own software, they do their own hardware, and because they do both, you get a pretty seamless experience that gives you basically full control over your car. And in many ways, this is is a superior product to what everyone else is doing uh, on the road. It's a good thing that Tesla doesn't need Apple CarPlay or Android Auto because their system is superior. They don't need to sort of supplement bad software with a third party solution. They're already doing a really good job themselves. But one of the big problems that many owners face every single day is that after you grow into the software and you learn what it can do and you sort of have everything set, you're sort of stuck in a sense. Sometimes you want more, you want extra capabilities, or things rapidly evolve and change. There's a new app or a service, or there's a new streaming service you wanna use, or a new mapping technology you wanna use that's available in other systems and other cars that you simply can access because, well, you're at the mercy of Tesla and their software, and they've decided, for whatever reason, not to add it yet. For example, if you wanna to listen to Pandora, Audible, YouTube Music, a podcast client, or if you're in a Model 3 or Model Y and wanna use uh, Sirius XM, for example, the only way that you can do that is by using Bluetooth from your phone and connecting it wirelessly to the Tesla. There is no native app. Same goes for Tesla's mapping software. It is pretty good, but if you're a big Waze aficionado and you really love that software or you want the native Google Maps experience or maybe you love Apple Maps, there is no option for that. If you had CarPlay or Android Auto, you could simply choose the mapping software you wanted. You could choose the app you wanted and that'd be the end of that. You could stream whatever music you want, use whatever podcast client you want. That is not the case with Tesla. Tesla, the only thing you can do is pick from a handful of options. And if you want to change the map software, you're out of luck because that's not even an option right now. But all hope is not lost here because there are a couple of ways Tesla could fix this. And one of the best ways they could do this, which I don't think they're ever gonna do, is to just natively support uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. There have been workarounds for this. I've shown this off in other videos. If you wanna check out how you can do this for yourself, hit the link down below, I'll walk you through it. They do give you more options for streaming media, for maps, stuff like that. If you wanna use Waze in your car, that's a way to do it. But if Tesla was to natively adopt uh, support for these systems, 
it'd be a big win for its drivers. You'd be able to have different options for streaming media. You'd have ways you could have, um, you know, uh, Apple Maps and stuff like that. But like I said, from everything we've heard from Elon and insiders and rumors, it doesn't seem like that's ever going to happen. Though there is a silver lining here, and that is because it seems like Tesla Solution is basically going to be launching very soon. We've heard for years that Tesla is working on their own custom app store, and new code suggests that a launch may finally be happening imminently, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. This would give you the ability to download apps for these services, like streaming apps, uh, map apps, games, all that stuff from your Tesla, and it would be a win-win for everybody. Us as Tesla owners and drivers could download third-party apps to sort of enhance or augment uh, some shortcomings with our current Teslas. That'd be awesome, like Waze, for example, or Apple Maps or Audible, that'd be awesome. Uh, developers could sort of charge money and then be able to make some money by distributing their apps in a Tesla app store, and Tesla could win as well as they'd be able to take a cut of that money and make some revenue off of this. It's a win-win-win all around. It'd be a great way to sort of see Tesla open up their software and offer a little bit more control for owners without sort of going the whole Apple CarPlay or Android Auto route, but it'd be a great way for developers to sort of make some cool experiences. And for us, it'd give us way more customization options in our Tesla. But let me pause my Tesla critiques for just a moment because there is one thing we've seen Tesla do over and over again the last couple of months that has been really great to see. I think we can all agree on that. And that is the discounts they continue to offer for their vehicles. Model 3s and Model Ys have seen some insane price reductions lately. Prices on these models have not been this good in a very long time. And Tesla has done so well in this space that other EV makers are following suit. Even used EVs are getting cheaper too nowadays. Nature is healing, it is so nice to see, but boy, that is not where the good news ends. That's because on top of that, some of you might have seen a juicy 17% net return just a few days ago. That's right, 17.6% net returns in your pocket, and that is in addition to some other recent exits for 10, 13, even 35% net returns. No, this is not coming from people selling off their Tesla stock, but because Masterworks, a wonderful longtime sponsor and partner on this channel, just cashed out their 14 exit to date, continuing their track record of 100% positive net returns. Masterworks Art Investing Platform has over $750 million in assets under management, but it doesn't take millions of dollars or knowing the right people or having the right connections in order to invest with them. Thousands of my subscribers have already signed up to invest alongside me, and as a longtime investor, I have seen paintings sell out in literally minutes. There's a wait list you have to sort of join if you want to sign up now, but thanks to Masterworks and the partnership they have with this channel, they're going to let you guys skip the wait list and get instant access right now by clicking my link right down below in the description. And not only can you use my special link to skip the wait list and get instant access, but also redeem a free art investing guide to help you begin your art investing journey. So if you wanna learn more, check out what Masterworks has to offer, check out this incredible platform, and also sort of get this free uh, guide for art investing and skip that wait list and get instant access right now. Hit the link down below to learn more and check out Masterworks for yourself today. The second controversial decision Tesla is making right now that is very, very controversial and very much up for debate in the EV space is the opening of their supercharger network to natively support non-Tesla EVs. I think you've got to acknowledge the fact that many people have looked at the competition and decided to buy a Tesla primarily, or maybe one of their top three reasons, was for the supercharger network, that it was sort of an exclusive perk for Tesla owners, it was only for them, you had access to this fast, reliable network, and you knew that you were never competing with every other EV on the road, but it was only for Tesla owners, and sort of you knew that you sort of had a bit of a priority access to charging over, like I said, every other EV on the road. And maybe I'm crazy in saying this, but I'm gonna say it, maybe a little controversial here, but I do feel like there was a sense of community at Superchargers. There's a group of collective individuals who were owners of Teslas. When you pulled up, you sort of knew, hey, there's a fellow Tesla owner. You sort of had at least one common thing in mind. You own these cars. And there was something nice about getting to mingle and talk to other uh, Tesla owners at supercharging stations. And it was an experience that was nice to uh, sort of uh, collectively share with other Tesla owners that uh, coming soon is no longer gonna be the case. Now, I know that there are two schools of thought around this problem, and there are definitely different uh, sides to the story, and I wanna do my best to sort of present both sides as evenly as I can. On one hand, 
This is a good thing for anyone who owns or wants to own a EV, especially if it's a non-Tesla EV. There's no doubt about it. Tesla's supercharger network is the fastest, most reliable, most robust option out there. And it has been one of the biggest perks of owning a Tesla for many, many years. Many other automakers have tried and failed to compete with the supercharger network and Tesla continues to win and dominate in that space. And as other EV makers more and more each day move to adopt the NACS plug over the next 12 or so months, they're going to gain access to this system basically immediately and it's going to make it way easier for anyone who owns any of these EVs to find a fast, reliable uh, place to charge their car that's not at home. This move also means there's gonna be continued investment into superchargers and sort of growing the infrastructure. And if the supercharger network uh, was sort of uh, robust and great before, it's gonna be even better. And if it was holding you back from not getting a Tesla or not getting an EV, that's not gonna be an excuse anymore. Having access to the supercharger network is a really big deal. And if you want to experience it, or if you're a Tesla owner looking to sort of branch out and try another EV, this is gonna be a really, really good thing that everyone's gonna love. And I know everybody bags on me in the comments for saying this, but there is a flip side that maybe is a bit more selfish, but it's something I have personally seen all the time. And that is that this move of opening up superchargers is great for everybody, but Tesla owners, especially in very EV centric markets right now. And now that these stations will open, this exclusive ownership perk is going to be immediately lost. And beyond that, there is a lot of concern that these stations will be way more busy, way less reliable, and that there will be longer wait times in many areas. And I'll tell you, for example, here in Southern California, there are so many Teslas on the road already that there often are wait times almost every single day, no matter day or night when you go to charge and adding all the other EVs to the mix is going to make it even more crowded. I know that's not the case for every supercharger station in North America, but I'll tell you in all the big cities I've been to, uh, LA area, Bay area, stuff like that, I believe this is going to be a serious problem. And it's also been revealed that at least in the case of GM, supercharging rates for all cars will be the same. So Tesla owners will really have zero advantage when it comes to this new system. No price incentives, no faster speeds, no priority access. That's all gonna be going away and superchargers are gonna become a regular old commodity for all EV drivers on the road. I know this isn't a big deal for everyone, but I will say myself and a considerable uh, amount of other Tesla owners are saddened by this and not necessarily a good thing for everybody. I know this, you know, bigger picture, you know, move to accelerating the move to EVs and stuff like that. I get it, but also just gotta say, not great for everybody. So just gonna say that. All right, moving on from that to mistake number three. Again, some might not think of this as a big deal, but for me, it's a big deal. And that is the lack of a charging cable that comes with any model Tesla you buy here in North America. I know this isn't an issue in other parts of the world, but here in North America, Tesla doesn't include a charging cable with the car, which to me seems absolutely insane. I know they already have different cost cutting measures. They don't include floor mats with the rear wheel drive Model 3 here in the US, which seems crazy to me. They cut corners in many ways, but not including a charging cable with the car to me, it seems like it's a step too far, especially given the fact that many people who are buying Teslas these days are first time Tesla owners and first time EV owners, and they're looking to make the transition to that electric vehicle as seamless as it can be. And if Tesla's really on a mission, like we just talked about, to accelerate the move to electric vehicles and green energy and stuff like that, why would you make it a little bit more complicated and cumbersome for someone to charge their car at home by not even including the cable they need with the car? I get not including the adapters and stuff like that. I, I get selling a different mobile connector and I even get selling a different uh, separate wall connector, but not including a basic charging kit with the car, even just for a standard 120 volt outlet, to me just seems flat out wrong. Another big frustration I've seen among many owners these days is the limitations surrounding FSD in its current form. And I'm not even talking about the FSD beta or the current full self-driving feature set, but rather the price and the big limitation around that price. And that is that if you were to decide to buy full self-driving today for $15,000, that software feature set would only be good with one physical car. Whatever car you bought full self-driving with, 
that's it. So if you decided to sell that car or that car got totaled or you got an accident or whatever happened and you got another Tesla, you have to buy full self-driving all over again, not because the car had something special or because it had special hardware or whatever it is, but just because that's just Tesla's policy and um, they're gonna make you pay for full self-driving every single time. And what sort of makes this frustrating is that full self-driving was always sort of touted as an investment that you could sort of get in early on the ground floor and you could invest in this technology now that's gonna get better over time. And I feel like what Tesla should do is honor the prices of that. And if I was to buy you know, full self-driving at $15,000 today, then the price went up you know, five years later, as an early investor in this technology, I should be able to keep that price. And more importantly, if someone is gonna make an investment that large, $15,000, and it's a software only feature, why not make it a transferable thing around the car? So if I got another Tesla in two years or three years or whatever it is, I could transfer that full self-driving package from one car to the other. Again, all Teslas already have the necessary hardware. It's just a matter of flicking a switch in the back end because uh, it's just purely software. Hey there, so this almost never happens, but I do have an update. So I'm breaking into the video with actually some good news. Elon actually just announced on Tesla's Q2 earnings call that actually, despite uh, a lot of things said in the past, they are going to allow for a one-time FSD transfer from one current owner to a new vehicle, but it's only going to happen if you currently have FSD and you order a new Tesla, and it's only going to apply in quarter three. So a one-time full self-driving transfer is coming from one Tesla to a new one, uh, only in Q3, which is great. Not sure if I love the limitations of this, because still, FSD was supposed to be an investment, something you would invest in one time and then reap the rewards on for many years to come, but at least this is better than nothing. So a little bit of good news here, breaking into the video with uh, something new to say, and uh, at least this time, it's a little bit good. Beyond that, one of the other things that I think would make a lot of sense is if one person on a Tesla account uh, sort of bought full self-driving, it'd be available to everyone else in a household. So for example, my wife and I uh, have two Teslas. I have a Model Y, she has a Model 3. It'd be nice that if I bought full self-driving or even if I subscribed to it, that everyone in a household would get that perk. I understand there are limitations there. Maybe for the subscription, it doesn't make so much sense. But if I paid the money, $15,000 for full self-driving, and because it's software only, it would be nice if Tesla sort of opened it up to be sort of a family perk that everyone could sort of share those benefits, sort of like uh, Apple, you can share credit cards and purchases and stuff, and there are things on Android as well. Being able to sort of share your full self-driving subscription to, or your purchase rather, to everyone in a household would make a lot of sense, and I think make a lot of owners very happy. And for the final mistake here, I know this is one that is going to change in probably a couple of weeks, but I just should say it, and that is uh, Tesla not uh, evolving the Model 3 or Model Y in any significant way over the last couple of years and not providing any big refresh. Now look, I know all signs point to a refresh coming right around the corner for the Model 3, about next year for the Model Y, but I do think it's fair to say that the EV landscape has changed over the years and the competition has gotten increasingly more fierce. And for Tesla to not make any significant changes to the three, I guess the Y in a sense, but the Y is a little bit newer. To not make any big changes to the three over the last couple of years sort of seems crazy to me. Things like 360 cameras, bigger screens, ventilated seats. Obviously, Tesla has done just fine selling these cars as it is, and who am I to judge for Tesla's success? But it would have been nice to see Tesla do a little bit more to be proactive about changes and upgrades over the last couple of years. They used to do a couple of changes every year or so, 12 to 18 months, but for a while it seemed like we got no big changes. I'd love to see Tesla make a bit of an effort to uh, refresh their cars a little bit uh, quicker, to see some new changes every 18 months. Obviously, we've got some updates with software, and I know that uh, this is definitely easier said than done. Tesla's doing just fine selling vehicles as it is, but I would love to see Tesla be a little bit uh, faster to innovate and add some refreshed options here and just make some changes that are good for Tesla owners. Add ventilated seats to the three and the Y, give us a bigger screen, add more screens. Obviously, like I said, a refresh model is coming, but it'd be nice if this refresh didn't take, you know, six years to get and we could have got it, you know, well, I shouldn't say six years, whatever it was. The Model 3 came out in what, 2018, 2019? Would have been nice to see this come in three years and not five years or whatever the case may be. Just some more often, um, you know, additions and refreshes would be nice to see. But again, that's just me and my opinion.
So I do want to know, what are your thoughts here? What are the current frustrations that you have with Tesla right now? What are some things they're doing that you don't agree with? Or do you think I'm wrong? Um, I, like I said, I'm a Tesla fan. I'm not looking to be a hater, but I do think there are some things we should talk about and, you know, have a frank discussion about. So let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget the ninth annual CCF Tesla raffle is happening right now. Your chance to win a Tesla Model 3, Model Y, Model S, Model X, Cybertruck, or $50,000 cash. Of course, these are going uh, to support the Chicago Chesed Fund uh, and their endeavors right now doing a lot of amazing things uh chance to win a really amazing prize an amazing uh, cause you can support at the same time if you want to learn more check it out for yourself today hit the link down below also use my code robert that's going to get you 25 dollars off two tickets or 500 dollars off 15 tickets limited amount of tickets available so be sure to check that out at the link down below also i'm continuing to do giveaways here on this channel if you want to win 25 dollars of amazon gift card money for free all you got to do is subscribe to the channel uh, like this video, then leave a comment down below, and then leave a comment on my previous video. I'll be doing a drawing from both those videos to give away some free money. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. Leave a comment down below, subscribe, like this video, and get it uh, entered for a chance to win some free money. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld. I'll see you all in the next one.